are scleral lenses and you can see in this picture, Dr. Morrison is holding a scleral lens and you can see the shape and the size of it. Something unique about scleral lenses compared to other lenses is that they're very large, 14 millimeters to it could be over 21 millimeters, depending on what the problem is. Just for a comparison, soft contact lenses that maybe you wear or maybe you or your friends or your family wear are about 14 millimeters or 14.5 millimeters. It's about that size or larger. They're made out of a gas permeable lens material, so it is a hard lens material but it's not like a gas permeable lens. They don't touch the cornea at all, which makes them very, very comfortable. They don't pop out of the eye. And that's why a lot of my patients go into scleral lenses because they're frustrated that their corneal gas permeable lenses pop out. Something else really important is that you have to fill the lens with preservative-free saline before you insert the lenses. Unique features of sclerals is mostly the fact that it doesn't sit on the cornea, that it touches the white portion of your eye, which is called the sclera. Sclera. sclera has relatively little nerve innervation, so they don't have a lot of nerves to make you uncomfortable if it moves around, which it doesn't. Scleral lens doesn't move around on the eye with your with your blink. You know, you do fill it with this sterile saline. So you'll see on the next slide that because you fill it with the sterile saline, you can actually heal the eye and heal different kinds of, of diseases. And you can see here on the left-hand side, this is the scleral lens, us filling it with saline prior to insertion. The second one is putting the lens on the eye, you kind of have to tilt your head down and bring the lens up to the eye. And then the third one is looking at the lens on the eye and you can see how large it is. It's a little bit larger, but when you're wearing it, nobody really notices that it's any different than a regular contact lens. This slide is very important for patients because some patients, they don't know that they have to use a special type of solution to fill the bowl of the lens. It's very, very important to fill the bowl of the lens with something that does not have preservatives. A lot of times what I've seen in my career is patients will come in and they're filling the bowl of the lens with saline, but it's not preservative free. And that is an issue because it could become toxic to the eye. If you're watching this now and, and you're like, what's that pink thing? That is a little vial that you can use to fill the bowl of the lens. Whatever you're using, make sure it's in these little vials. If it's not in a vial, if you're using something that's in a bottle of any type, that is not preservative free. So you, even if you look at it, and you said, well, it says that it's preservative free. Even if it is, problem with the big bottles is that after 48 hours, the bottle's contaminated. And that's because of all the bacteria, fungus, viruses that are in the air. So Cynthia asks, I wear RGPs. And when I wear makeup, if any particle goes in between my lens and the eye, it gives me a lot of pain and I have to remove my lenses a lot. Can small particles go inside the scleral lens like they do with an RGP, even when it's a windy day, it's really difficult. This is one of the main reasons that people go into scleral lenses because you don't get that foreign body entrapment. If there's a piece of dust or a piece of makeup that gets into the eye and you're wearing a corneal GP, yeah, that thing feels like glass in your eye and you've got to take it out, rinse it off, put it back in, your eyes all red and irritated. And that's the beauty of scleral lenses is that you don't get that because because of how large it is and how much it covers your eye. If you have an extreme irregularity to your cornea, maybe you've had a corneal transplant, you have really bad keratoconus, anything kind of bizarre, you don't have to touch it with a contact lens. You can actually vault over that. And we learned a long time ago in what's called the CLEC study, it was a study of corneal lenses. And if the corneal lens touches your eye too much, maybe you won't feel it, but it actually could cause scarring. Back in the day when people had very severe disease, we used to fit them with these GP lenses. You'd fit them with the best lens that you could, but it would be still too flat and touching the cornea. It would create scarring. And then um, you'd have to undergo a corneal transplant to remove the scarring. So with scleral lenses, we can avoid a lot of the corneal transplants that we did in the past because they're not touching the cornea and they don't induce scarring. So that's the best thing about them, I think, especially really severe disease. They can treat that. They can treat dry eyes. So I tell my patients, because you fill them up with that saline and it sits on your eye all day, it's actually a treatment for dry eyes. 
eyes. So if you have a really severe dry eye, you have maybe a Sjogren syndrome, you have something like Stevens Johnson syndrome, they can actually go over and heal your cornea. In cases that Dr. Wu and I have seen, they also heal if you have a scratch on the cornea and it's not healing. A lot of herpes simplex has these types of damaged corneas because of the nerve innervation, they don't ever heal up. And so when you put the scleral lens on, because the lids aren't rubbing on your cornea all day, you actually get the chance to heal. And they're more comfortable, like we said before, than previous lens options, because they're not sitting on your really strongly innervated cornea. They're sitting on the white portion of your eye, which doesn't have a lot of feeling. A lot of people maybe don't know that scleral lenses, not only do they help vision issues, but they also have healing properties. Like you said, we sometimes use these lenses, not even for the vision part, we're using it as for the protection. I've got tons of patients that they have dry eyes, no matter what kind of dry eye treatments they're doing, their eyes still will not heal up. And sometimes then they get referred to me, we fit them with a custom scleral lens that actually forms a barrier between the outside environment and their eyeball. So basically people ask, why do these lenses work and glasses and soft contact lenses do not work? And that's because if you see on the left-hand side, this is an eye with keratoconus, which is a condition where the cornea bulges out, but this can be any corneal irregularity, even a severe dryness. Basically we see an image, the light in the image comes, it passes through our glasses, the glasses correct it. But once it hits that cornea, that's very irregular, the light rays bend again. The bending of the light rays actually creates an image on the cornea that's distorted. So if you can see, if you have a soft contact lens that just drapes around the cornea, you're still going to have the same issue because you're just mimicking the exact shape of your cornea. You need a lens that's going to be rigid where it can maintain its shape and it can fill in all the gaps with the tear film so you can see better again. So you can see on the right, this is a regular cornea. That's why I drew it that way. But you can kind of see, pretend that that regular cornea is actually a scleral lens over the cornea. You can see that this patient has a regular image coming through the glasses. And then once it hits their, their scleral lens or cornea, it just creates the same type of image on the retina. So you can see clearly again. And I will add that from the other side, corneal scars are a huge thing that I found in my practice where you could have a central scar and you don't think you're going to get any better than you are right now. I've had people go from 2400 to 2020 with the scleral lens. It is the, even though they have the scarring, it's like the most miraculous thing. So even small things on the cornea, that's really degrading your vision. These can completely change that. Here's an example. What we're looking at is in the center of the cornea, you see these little rings and that's something called intacts, which are these small little plastic rings that some of the keratoconus patients have. It's not used as much anymore. There are some surgeons that do prefer to use it, or there's some patients that are a good candidates, but it's not as popular as it was, you know, 20 years ago. And then there's a scleral lens on top of this patient's eye. The problem with this patient is that with the keratoconus, that's already changing the shape of their eye to be very, very irregular. So the vision's very, very blurry. Intacts, the purpose of them was to kind of center the keratoconus so it wasn't so far down. And, and they thought it would also help with the progression of the keratoconus. But it ended up that it kind of made our lives a little bit more challenging when we were fitting these contact lenses on patients, especially before we had scleral lenses. So those I'm not seeing it nearly as much anymore. But just like Dr. Morrison's picture on the last slide, on the left-hand side, this patient, if they just wore glasses, they would see this kind of distorted, funny image in their eye. But by putting them into a scleral lens, that can reshape and rebend the light rays that are entering in the eye to make the vision very, very clear. And this is an example of a patient that I had who had an extreme dryness from eyelid surgeries. This patient had multiple surgeries because they had skin cancer. And so they had Mohs surgeries, which removes a lot of tissue. Because of this removal of tissue, they were unable to close their eyes fully. You can see on both of these eyes that the lids are very inflamed, that they have a space between when she closes her eyes, there's still a space for air to get through. And this created a really, really blurry vision, severely dry ocular surface, all all day discomfort. So we fit this patient with a scleral lens for a therapeutic effect where we would fill the lens with saline. It would sit on her eye all day. It would protect the eye. It would allow this eye to heal up too. So when I first saw her, her vision was with the scleral lens, probably 20, 30. And I said, just wait a little bit. Let's see if it, if it heals up your ocular surface. If you start healing, you might achieve better vision. And she actually did. So she ended up achieving a slightly crisper and clearer vision the longer that she wore these lenses because it was correcting 
treating her, her vision and her underlying problem. And it was protective. The design technology of scleral lenses has increased dramatically in the last few years. We have your conventional scleral lens that most of us were fitting for the last, you know, six, 10 years. Now we have scan-based designs, we have mold-based designs, and we have higher order aberration correction. Uh, Dr. Wu and I both have some technology which actually takes a scan of not just the cornea, but it scans the sclera, the white portion of your eye, which is where the lens settles. Having that technology is really great to see how different that eye is. If you can see this picture down on the right, the bottom right-hand side, all those different colors, that's all different elevations of the eye. So every point that you see a different color, that's a different shape on the side of, of the eye. So if you can see, if you fit a perfectly spherical lens around this eye, you're going to have areas where the sphere is closer and the, where the sphere is farther away from your actual eyeball. And sometimes this can result in some areas it's red. And then this area I can feel with my lid or getting some debris under the eye because the lens is just not fitting. And so it's kind of like moving around a little bit. With the scan base, we actually make it, we take scans, we make it based on CAD software. So you can see the software on the left, it's this person had a growth on their eye. It's called a pterygium. And so this lens actually got to move around the growth and it just fits much more perfectly because we're not bound by those spherical design properties that we were with, with older lenses. Basically what you're seeing in this photo is we actually take a mold of the eyeball and the blue goo that you see there is really similar to kind of dental mold material, but it's very, very safe for the eye. So we're actually taking a mold of the eye, only takes a couple minutes in office. It's painless. It does not hurt. It's not uncomfortable. It just feels like kind of cold and gooey. But what that does is we're able to map the eye perfectly. We send this mold to the laboratory in Colorado and they use a 3D scanner to map over 3 million data points. And the end result is what you see on the right here is this incredible, custom, unique scleral lens that is fit perfectly for you. This is like a fingerprint. Nobody else will ever be able to wear this lens besides you and, and in whatever eye this came from. It is that unique. It is incredible technology that we didn't have before. And it's become a huge problem solver for us, especially like what Dr. Morrison said, some of these people that have maybe a, a strange growth on their eye, and it's going to be really hard to fit them in, into a traditional lens, or maybe they have a, a corneal transplant that is very, very severe or irregular in shape that's going to be much more challenging to fit in a traditional lens. Higher order aberration correction is another new technology that not a lot of doctors have in the office, but this is good for patients that have some of these issues that no matter what we do with the traditional, either gas permeable lens, soft lens, hybrid scleral, they're just having issues as far as maybe they're seeing glare still, maybe they're seeing halos, maybe their vision is just not as crisp as they had hoped. An example for this case in particular that you see on the left, the bar that you see that's in red tells us that there's some problems with the, the light going into the eye, which is going to happen with people that have irregular surfaces like keratoconus, corneal transplant, really all of the patients we've been talking about today. He has keratoconus and with the traditional scleral lens, he could only see about 20, 30. And that was with the best correction. We did as much as we could in that regular lens. But then we did the scan on him when we, and we saw, well, there is an area that we can maybe try to improve. So we designed this higher order aberration lens. And now he can see 2020. So it's a pretty amazing technology. Uh, we're still figuring out who's a good candidate, who's a poor candidate. We don't really know yet because it's so new. But, you know, I tell patients that if they have exhausted all their options and we've tried all these other lenses and they're still not happy with their vision, then this is something that we can try. It may not work. It may work. We don't know. But sometimes patients are very, very motivated to at least try because they want to see if their vision can be corrected even more. Thank you.